This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917, and sponsored in part by Salva Verde, a Costa Rica rainforest lodge. We've just arrived in Costa Rica, the rich coast, and we're about to get in the jungle bus on the way to Salva Verde Lodge in search of great green macaws and other fantastic jungle animals. If the jungle is anything like this, we're in for a royal time. Let's go birding. This is the perfect habitat for this bird. Beautiful plumes. Look at the plumes on the neck and the head. Yeah! That's what I call birding. Awesome. That's our golden bird. Costa Rica is a well-known and phenomenal destination. With close on 900 different species recorded in the country, in an area the size of West Virginia, this tiny country has more species of birds than the entire United States of America. Costa Rica's birds do so well here because 25% or one quarter of the entire country is protected land. Our goal for this week is to search for the endangered great green macaw, our golden bird. And there is no better place to base ourselves for this quest than Salva Verde Lodge, situated on the wildlife rich Caribbean slope. The great thing about Salva Verde Lodge is it's a two hour flight from Miami and a short drive from San Jose to this beautiful patch of primary rainforest. Arriving at Salva Verde Lodge, you are blown away by the setting of this spectacular place. Overlooking the Serapiki River, this lodge is set with great canopy trees around it and there is just excellent birding. Selva Verde Lodge in the Serapiki region is well situated on the Costa Rican birding route and is one of the areas that you just have to come to on any visit to Costa Rica. The Costa Rican bird route was a project that was born in 2004. The idea for a bird route in Costa Rica was to protect the remaining forest in the area and promote the ecotourism in the area as an incentive for a conservation. The wonderful thing about Salva Verde Lodge is you can bird at your own pace here. There's over 500 acres of habitat here, from botanical gardens to secondary growth forest to incredible primary growth forest as well. Great birding to suit any type of birder, whether you're serious or whether you're novice. The national bird of Costa Rica is the ubiquitous clay-colored thrush found all around the grounds of Salva Verde Lodge. But if you want to come out here, remember to bring the right tools and a good guide is essential. You want to hear what a clay colored thrush sounds like? I use my Audubon Guides app and I'm playing the voice here of a clay colored thrush. Even relatively close to the buildings itself, we came across crested guans, there are also great curassows in the area. These are birds which are seldom seen and can be found with a little bit of effort around Salva Verde Lodge. The grounds right around Salva Verde Lodge are not only thriving with a whole lot of different species of birds, but also amphibians and in particular poison dart frogs. These high pitched calls around me are coming from two species which are most common here, the green and black poison dart frog and the strawberry dart frog. Let's see if we can try and get a few of these. This over here is the green and black 
variety of poison dart frog, and you can hear them calling around us here on the forest floor. So this is the strawberry dart frog, those beautiful bright colors. Poison dart frogs are brightly colored for a reason. Some poison dart frogs have some of the most lethal toxins known to man. And please, if you ever come across these frogs, do not pick them up because you never know if you're gonna pick up a really dangerous species of poison dart frog. And they are beautiful, beautiful amphibians right here at Silver Verde Lodge. As well as poison dart frogs in the forest here, which you're gonna see close to the trail. Something like this, you may not see. This is a hog-nosed pit viper. Look at the shape, the diamond shape of that head. You can see it's got those eyes positioned right on the top of the head and it's coiled up right now, just waiting for something to come past. If the local people around here call the hog-nosed viper the seven-step snake, this mother load of a snake right here is probably the six-step snake. Look at the size of this snake's head in relation to its body. I mean, it is a really thick-bodied snake, but the head is about double the width of the neck part of the snake. Salva Verde Lodge has been operating for 26 years, and count yourselves lucky if you happen to come across one of these great snakes. The guides here are excellent, so much so that in 26 years, nobody has been bitten by any snake here at Salva Verde. They truly are spectacular creatures to be enjoyed and watched at your leisure. A beautiful snake of the Neotropics, the Fertilize. One of the amazing things about Salva Verde Lodge are the bird feeders, positioned at strategic locations all around the lodge. And we're gonna set up our bird cam before we go looking for great green macaws and see what great images we can get here of the feeding birds. This morning we're heading out in search of a very secretive river bird called the sun bitten. This is its habitat, these fast flowing streams and rivers. They like to hunt over these rocks. And this morning we're heading out with Aventuras on the raft where we're gonna go down some grade two to grade three rapids on the river here looking for sun bitterns. There's a forecast of a massive front moving into this area. So we're gonna try and beat the rain get onto the rapids before it really starts coming down. Just this morning, this was a dry creek. And this is typical of the Neotropics. This is the dry season in Costa Rica, which means absolutely nothing. This was dry this morning, and look at it right now. We've just come across a sun bitten a little bit further down this river and we're going to get a look at it right now. This is out of this world. I mean, words cannot describe what we have just found. We have a sun bitten on a nest right here next to this raging torrential creek. There's incredible drama happening right now. Let's get a look. Look at the mother sitting on her nest and the water is rising but literally by the second this water was about two feet below the nest it's now to within 10 centimeters below the nest threatening to wash away the nest we don't know how many babies are in there yet but it looks like she's got at least one baby underneath her on the nest here one thing i know for sure is sun bitten nests are hardly ever found and I can tell you something, very few people have had the privilege of watching what we are watching right now. Well, look at her, she's, she's standing up. There, there's not one chick, there are two chicks there. Look at that, look how beautifully colored those chicks are. Look at the patternings, kind of like a black and white patterning on the babies. Look at them shuffling for warmth. She's left them, gone up the branch. Looks like she's coming back. 
Okay, she's coming back. She's trying to keep them warm in this torrential downpour. Oh my gosh, she took a wave right on the chin. That wave nearly took her off. This is perilous stuff here right now. There are logs, there are entire trees coming down the river here. If one tree hits her, she is ticket. This is absolutely tragic. Sun bitterns will hardly ever leave their nest unattended. And it looks like this is exactly what probably the female has just done. She has left and abandoned her chicks because this is getting to threaten her entire life as well. I cannot believe that she has abandoned those two little chicks, but this is nature. She's obviously figuring that next season she might have a chance to rear another clutch of eggs. But what a shame, because these chicks, it looks as though they're gonna be washed away any second now. It doesn't look promising for them because this river is still rising. We found the adults. They're actually right down at this flooded creek. It's flooded right out and the river's actually broken its banks right onto the open areas here. And this crazy pair of sun bittens have not abandoned their chicks at all. They're out hunting in this nightmarish weather, trying to sustain these shivering chicks in the nest. One of the parent birds just flew in. It's gonna feed the chicks right now. Look at this, she's at the nest, she's got a minnow in her mouth. What is this bird doing? Looks like it's settling back down on the chicks. There she goes, now she's gonna feed them. Look at this, she's moving. Look at those chicks with their mouths open waiting for the food. There we go, look at this. Yummy, fish for dinner. This is awesome. The parents are still hunting. Look at her nodding her head like that. One of the parent birds is nodding her head. This might be a display. The other bird has flown in. Might be a signal to change over. Other bird's got a minnow as well. Oops, there goes the one parent now. The other one's coming in, feeding, feeding that same chick, another minnow. And the little sibling gets nothing. It's really astounding that here we are in 2010 and so little is known about the breeding habits of this secretive bird. Sun bitterns have only been recorded at the nest maybe a handful of times. What we do know about them is that they'll lay two pinkish buff eggs that'll take approximately 27 to 28 days to incubate until those hatch into these feathered little nestlings. Besides that, we know very, very little else, except that the parents will go foraging for crustaceans, minnows, crabs, anything that they can get their bills on in the shallows and in the fast running water of these creeks and these streams in the neotropics. This has been one of the most spectacular experiences of my birding career seeing such a rare bird on a nest and this drama unfolding here in the Neotropics. Our two guides, Michael and Kope, have just found us this sun bitten and thank you so much guys. What an absolute pleasure this was. Buddha vida. We were really worried about the sun bitten and her chicks. We've come back here the next morning and the difference is stark. This river is pretty much a little creek again, and we're gonna try and get a look and see if these sun bitterns have made it through the night. This is a much more peaceful scene than yesterday. Look at the parent bird, really peaceful and relaxed, incubating and keeping the fledglings warm. She's standing up, and yes, there are two nestlings side by side, head to toe in the nest. Look at their heads, they look like little baby anacondas. Great to know that this family of sun bitterns weathered that treacherous storm. The two real target birds of any visit to Salva Verde Lodge are the sun bitten and the great green macaw, two highly sought after species which are very easily found from the lodge. Looking for the great green macaw was a dream come true for me. These parrots are just absolutely out of this world. They're the largest parrots in the region and they're listed in CITES as endangered, so they're highly sought after birds. And you can sit at the lodge 
and see these parrots nearly on a daily basis flying over the lodge. We took a short drive from the lodge as well to find out where these parrots were nesting. Close to Salva Verde Lodge is the little village of Arbolitas, the Spanish word for little trees. And it's not hard to see why this place is called Little Trees, a stark reminder of the deforestation that is rife in this region. But even here, in these open cattle pastures, are a few remnant giants of the jungles around here, the almendro tree. These have been lucky enough to escape the ax. The perfect nesting hole for a pair of great green macaws is high up, right at the top of an almendro tree, at a place where a bough has broken off the main trunk, leaving a gaping hole, perfectly suited for raising their brood. But these nesting holes are at a premium. Lots of other species like these, species like red lord parrots. The first tree we went to had what looked to be an active nesting hole, but the parent birds were definitely not there. And across the valley, we heard the unmistakable call of a pair of great green macaws. There they are, we've got them. We've got two macaws flying right in here. This is incredible, here we go. Oh my gosh, look at these birds, they are so beautiful. Yes, that's our golden bird, great green macaw, right here in the little village of Arbolitas, close to Salva Verde Lodge. Yes! These macaws are right at the top of this almendro tree, and this is the perfect opportunity for me to get killer views through my Nikon Edge scope. The lives of great green macaws are inextricably tied to this one tree, the almendro, or the wild almond, also called the tree of life. It has a circumference approaching 50 feet, and it has a height of 150 feet. These trees are absolutely massive, and they support innumerable varieties of life. From the base of this tree, right up to the crown of this tree, it can support over 1,000 different organisms. Great green macaws used to occur in significant flocks in the early 20th century, but today their numbers have been reduced by over 90%. Together, the almendro and the great green macaw, or lapas verdes, face an uncertain future. But thanks to the efforts of local NGOs and places like Salva Verde Lodge, these trees are now being protected, providing great nesting habitat and feeding for great green macaws. This behind me is the 12th almendro tree that has been protected by offering local farmers a small gratuity for not cutting down the trees or disturbing the great green macaws. Each local farmer is awarded $600 to protect a single almendra tree. And this funding is raised through a variety of individuals. In fact, Salva Verde Lodge, where we're staying, has bought one of these beautiful trees. I guess that if you have to compare any representative form of life here in this part of the world, you, I will address two things. First of all, the great green macaw as a symbol and the wild almond tree as, as the most important form of, of biodiversity regarding food, regarding shelter, regarding also nesting uh, places for, for all forms of life because we're talking about all kinds of life. And if there's any testament to the success of this great conservation story, this is it right here. A lone great green macaw feather, or the feather of the Lapas Verdes. A bird which, thanks to this effort, will be seen for generations to come. This little slice of paradise in Costa Rica is not only a focal point for birding, but also the host of other adventures that you can do on the Caribbean slope here. You can go whitewater rafting, you can go horse riding, you can go zip lining, you can go on night walks, you can listen to great naturalists tell the story of this beautiful, beautiful area. So much to offer in one place with excellent birding. I think for me, what really made this trip was the incredible hospitality 
and the knowledge that these guides have here at Salva Verde Lodge. The accommodations are great. You've got excellent food, excellent cooking, and your needs are really catered for 24-7. This Birding from the Edge segment is brought to you by Nikon, manufacturers of the Edge line of optics. Salva Verde Lodge is perfectly positioned to do a whole variety of activities on the Caribbean slope. And we've got the boys from Aventuras out with us this afternoon to do a little bit of zip lining and also to get down and dirty on the river itself. Let's do it. This is Birding from the Edge. Woo! This is Birding from the Edge. <laughs> 